in California. Uh, yes, yeah. I guess. And Gentlemen, uh, we are live. All right. David says we're live. We're live. By the way, David, it's good to have you back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's good you, to be back. Why don't you tell us where you were at? Go ahead, buddy. Say I it. went to Playa del Carmen, okay, so Mexico. So he starts off oh, he rolled speaking that hard. regular hard. English, <laughs> and then he goes straight up with the accent. By the way, i got to tell you guys, Sammy, uh, we have Sammy de Bolgravano here with us today. Sammy, thank you for being on the podcast. My pleasure. My we, pleasure. We're going to talk about mafia states of America, and we're going to talk about a lot of other things that's going on uh, in uh, uh, different stories. But my... Uh, Shower here in the office. I'm mm -hmm. begging the building to fix my shower to be warm water. Okay, I go in there. This is the fourth time the plumber. I'm right now. It's a public announcement. If the plumber's listening, <laughs> please, yes, por favor. I'm telling you, give me some hot water. I go in there every time I go in. The Caroline's like, no, they fixed it. I go and I scream like a little girl. I'm like loud off the top of my lungs, but I have to start it with a cold shower. Sometimes I go hot, then I go cold. I thought it was very important for the world to know about this. The fact that my water is still cold so sam tell caroline tell mickey please let's fix this show. so how cold anyway, is it is dude, it's so cold that it wakes me up it's great i don't yeah. mind it i mean i come right after the gym but it wakes me up so i'm awake right now so that's so you know. that loud girlish scream we hear that would, that's me <laughs> yeah i can't scream like that okay. but it's a manly <laughs> scream like yeah, that I so hear you. Yeah. anyways and at I, least you look good. It's a shame because we all know what happens to a man in a cold shower. <laughs> they feel more confident. Their confidence goes up. I don't know about that. They Same thing up, that I happens think. in the pool. <laughs> the water was cold. Yeah. <laughs> Two it minutes cold. into the podcast. I just got out the water. I just got out, <laughs> just got out the water. <laughs> That's a Costanza reference. Oh, my gosh. So, Sammy, um, since we announced Mafia States of America trailer, the couple trailers that's come out, Tell us what are your thoughts the three days we spent together uh, while we did the interview, and what are you hearing from the market? What are people telling you? I know your podcast is crushing it. Uh, you got some big projects coming uh, soon as well, which I'm sure you know uh, the, right. the followers are going to know about. But tell us what's what's happened ever since we sat down with you and Michael uh, with the Mafia States of America. Well, a lot of things. The, uh, all my following, everybody's asking me when it comes out, when it's going to come out, and all this other stuff. So uh, I tell them soon. And uh, but uh, everything is going well, um, and we're getting a lot of calls from everybody, different companies, different people from all over the place. And uh, I think the three days we spent there with the interview, some of them were a little rough. I think. Yeah. I got a little excited a couple of times, but uh, I think it went well. I think it went very well. I thought there was a great team put together. My team came down. They loved it. They enjoyed it. I mean, uh, you, I you think I have a diff different image <clears throat> of Michael. Really? You know? Yeah, I do. I have a different image of him. You know, meeting his family and, and him, and uh, I think he's a lot more honest than I thought originally. And um, I got to like him. To Very interesting. Did you think that was going to be the case? Because when you and I talked the first time for a couple hours, you were like, there's no way in the world I'm going to do this. And then a couple of years later, you ended up doing it. Your expectation going in versus what ended up happening, do those two align, or did you think it was going to be slightly different? I didn't know what it was going to be like. I'll tell you the truth. Michael's a, a racketeer. There's no question about it. He was a moneymaker for the family. He did that Russian uh, thing. He said he started it. He didn't actually start it. But uh, the Russians did it. They used us. It was an, a very intelligent move that they did. And they came to us with this bullshit, protect us and do this and do that. They came to us for one reason. We had connections all over the city of New York. We could put them in hundreds of gas stations with their gas and their scam. And they gave us money. But they gave us that bullshit story, we're scared, take care of us. They didn't need us to take mm. care of us. They just needed us to get gas stations. So there was a lot of stories, and he was one of the first people they went to. I think his father's reputation and name made them go to him, and uh, he was very successful with it. But like we talked about in the in the thing, I think I'm a gangster, and a little bit of a racketeer. I think people agree with that, and he's more of a racketeer, which is not a shame. There's no shame to that. But uh, and I think he believes in a lot of things. His religion, I questioned that a couple of times, but I think. Uh, you know, some people change their life and believe it. Some people don't. But I think he's told the truth. 
So I you, changed my mind a little bit, this you, whole thing. that You know, uh, uh, we have a clip that we'll show here in a minute uh, with Rudy Giuliani. Mm. And there's a part where I ask Rudy about do people change, you know, all this other stuff. And he says certain things about Michael. He says certain things about Gotti. And then he says certain things about you, about people changing. But, and we'll get into that here in a minute. But the question I have for you is there seems to be, and I know I don't know if we got into this or not, there seems to be a certain level of pride to say I'm a gangster versus a racketeer in your world. Like we're not in your world. We don't know your world. But in your world, how is a gangster seen? How is a racketeer seen in the streets? It's almost like if I'm in the military, you know, I wonder, is it like infantry versus support? What, what does that look like, racketeer against gangster? That's a great analogy. I mean, uh, infantry to, uh, versus support. You know, when you're in the infantry, you're going out and you're putting yourself on the front lines, and there's somebody in the way in the back supporting you. They all deserve respect. They're all part of it. Yeah. But, I mean, the main guy on the front lines, you got to give him a lot of respect. He's the guy taking the bullets, giving them. I mean, he's the guy who's making them happen. So you got to respect him a little bit more than the guy in the back. But um, they're all part of it. So I never looked at it. In the, well, I was in the military as well. I never looked at somebody who was in the back, that he was less than me. Mm. But uh, he was in the back. I was in the trenches. And I really wasn't in the trenches. I was in the infantry, but I was on communication. So in the back, we set up a tent where they communicate with the front lines mm. and back and forth. And I'm the schmuck who ran back and forth to the front line to talk with the guy who's got the radio or what there was problems. So I'm, I'm back and forth. So I knew what it was to sit in the back. And I knew it was to be sitting on the front lines. I'd rather sit in the back a little bit. To tell you the truth. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you hear bullets fucking flying around you. And where was this exactly? Uh, in training. In okay, training. training. Yeah, I never went to Vietnam. For Vietnam, this is for, okay, gotcha. Yeah, I was in during the Vietnam War, but I never went there. Mm. You needed eight, uh, a full year. I only had eight months left, so they wouldn't ship you out. Mm. So, and then they asked me when I go to the VA, did you have boots on the ground? Uh, yeah, I did. In Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, I had boots <laughs> on the ground. Not in Vietnam. <laughs> you know, he went to Vietnam, except he, he was in Vietnam to party. Not necessarily yeah, it was Vietnam a great time. To, well, after the war was yeah. over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, was, this was early 2000s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Different yeah. story. D different story. So, I brought back Nancy so, Tran with so, <laughs> so, so racketeering and gangster. Like when, when guys that listen to your podcast or guys that listen to interviews, and they're in the world. Maybe they were an associate. Maybe they were a maiden. I'm not even talking about the cop who was the underboss or anybody that's you know had a rank. Those who were an associate or those who were made men. How do they look at visually? Like I'm really curious. How do they look at a gangster uh, uh, versus a racketeer? If they if they walked up to a racketeer and it's an earner as big as Sammy, as big as Michael, the kind of money that he was making, do they look at him and do they say? Wow, this guy's making money for a lot of us. So respect for that. And then do they look at a gangster and say, I better not cross this guy? What is that level of mindset in your world, not our world, in your world? Well, to put it in your world, how do you look when you go in a room and there's a pit bull and there's a poodle? What do you think and how do you feel? You're saying a racketeer is a poodle? Well, compared to a pit bull, he's a poodle. Yes. So See, that's it's an a, interesting it's a analogy to say the least. I, <laughs> I didn't think he's. I don't really have a comment other than that's interesting. They, well, I mean, you know, so I'm a gangster, I'll, I'll, you're a racketeer. That's what I just yeah, learned from. Because I make the money and you deal with other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, a pit bull bites, right? So you're yeah. gonna have. Well, you yeah. know, I'm gonna be a little more cautious than this. I got you. Mm -hmm. Poodle. And the pit bull, you know, the poodle makes money at shows. Shows and 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 you got to respect that he's won medals and you could sell his got little it. puppies and stuff like that for big money and so you respect both of them you love both of them they're dogs yeah Sammy can I and ask one's you, a little more dangerous than the other one can the can the gangsters do they need to coexist meaning do you need to have racketeers and gangsters can you just have gangsters can you just have no you do, you, you got to have, have a yin yang kind of a thing how does it work it's well, let's we respect the entire thing. If mm -hmm. you burnt that saint in your hand and you became a made guy, we respect you, no matter what. Mm. We respect the life. So we respect whatever you are. Somebody proposed you to become a friend of ours. 
and we respect that. If we don't respect that, we could die. We can't raise our hands to one another. I can't raise my hands to a guy who's a racketeer and say, I'm a tough guy and he's not. I can't. That bullshit just don't work. Everybody has equal respect. David, is that mic on? Is that mic on? No. no. Is that mic on, Kai? It was on. Now you turned it off. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, that's good. I'm hearing stuff. Okay. Uh, excellent. Did that answer your question for you, that racket here versus gangster? I, I want to make sure that he was. The reason why we're asking answer, this yeah. question is because Adam's thinking about being a gangster. <laughs> and we're trying to hold him back from doing it. Because Sam, he wants to. I, I don't think he I is can convinced for that life. He doesn't want to do La Cosa Nostra. He talks about La Kosher Nostra, <laughs> is what he wants to do. That's, See, that's appropriate. Like, yeah, he could uh, go to uh, uh, you know a Jewish deli and and, <laughs> and hit it up. Uh. Thank you. But you've been you said very quite candidly last night that you got along very well with Jews and the Italians and the Jews coexisted and you guys did things together. Would oh, you expound upon that? Uh, absolutely, absolutely, always did. In Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, when I was a kid, it was predominantly an Italian Jewish neighborhood. We had a house, my mother and father and us, in the middle. On both sides, there was three houses attached. On both sides, there was Jewish families. Mm -hmm. And we had a tremendous respect. I told stories a long time ago. My friends would break my balls. You're Jewish. They would call you Jewish? Yeah, you're, Jew you're a wow. Jew. I said, I'm not. I'm Italian. What are you talking about? They said in the house, when we put up the Christmas lights in the window, there was the Hanukkah lights. The, the menorah. The menorah. The shamash was right here, the leader. Right. So I went in and asked my father. Why are we putting candles in the window that are Jewish? People mm -hmm. think we're Jewish. He said, because our neighbors, the holiday is very similar and respected the neighbors, they're Jewish. Mm -hmm. I put the menorah in the window. And I learned things like that. When I shoveled snow for my own house, I did it for them. And uh, they always took care of me. They had fish. They would call me in, Sammy, come in my house. They, bought, they knew I had a fish tank. They would buy me fish. I always had great relationships with Jewish people. Sammy, what's the story about the, uh, the Jewish community? I talked to Myron Sugarman. I don't know if you uh, uh, know the name Myron Sugarman or not. No. I, I had him on, and he was, uh, uh, he was uh, uh, a Jewish gangster. They, he calls himself the last Jewish gangster. And he was telling stories about the Jewish uh, uh, mob back in the days, how tough they were, how strong they were. And partly he talked about how they trained Italians because they were one of the first that... What do you know? You're a history guy. What do you know with the history of the Jewish mob and the affinity with the Italian mob? Did they was there a training going on? Was there some kind of a... You know how you're talking about Maya Lansky and yeah. them. They, yeah. were, they were very powerful in the mob. Murder Incorporated was mostly Jews. Say that one more time. Murder, Murder Incorporated, the shooters were mostly Jewish guys. Interesting. Why was that? I don't know. Ask Lucky Luciano when you see him. Okay. But uh, Lucky Luciano was completely close with Maya Lansky and a lot of Jewish gangsters. He grew up with them. He liked them. They were around him. And mm -hmm. they were tough. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bugsy Siegel. These people were tough people. Murder Incorporated, there was a bunch of them. Well, the, it, it comes down, um, the actual history of it comes from the original immigration. The Jews were the first real wave of immigrants in lower Manhattan. And then, you know, we talked about this with the Irish. Corned beef on St. Patrick's Day is actually the Jews teaching the Irish how to cure their meat. There was no refrigeration. They couldn't afford it. So it's kind of the same thing. In the, in the early American, uh, you love this word, zeitgeist, the, the Eastern Europeans and the Jews were the first wave of uh, immigrants. And then the Italians and the Irish, we were the second wave. So we kind of learned from them coming over here. Mm. And even when I was in the military, there was a few Jewish guys I knew. And uh, they were from New York, and we used to travel with the car back and forth. And uh, one of the guys, his mother, would make me sandwiches. She, she heard my name was Sammy. She must have thought I was a Jew. She made me sandwiches. Shmuel. And she made me with this Jewish salt on top of the Jewish salt, fat, the yeah. fat on top of the sandwich. It was delicious. And... Uh, she liked me up until she saw a, a cross on my neck. I think that <laughs> she didn't like me no more. But uh, I had another guy, Te uh, Fellman, Teddy Fellman. When we got out, he owned uh, uh, an employment center, and he hired me and my friends, got us jobs and places. And so I always got along with Jews. So you had a good relation with the Jews. I saw you do an interview with uh, a bunch of black guys. I think it was like on iHeartMedia. I don't, I don't recall. And they were asking you how you or Italians got along 
with the blacks in your neighborhood. Do you recall that interview? I'm, unless you're talking about Gangster Chronicles. I don't know what it was called, but it was you uh, in a room. Uh, they were asking you about relations with uh, how you got along with uh, African Americans. I always got along good with them, mm-hmm. you know, uh, especially in prison. I got along very well. I'm not racist. I'm not anything like that. I don't walk around like in prison thinking my shit don't stink. So I had good relationships with people. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to gyms. I used to spar and I worked out with black guys and things. So I never had a problem with black guys. You told a story about when you were in the army that uh, they were they were in line giving the food. Yeah. And they were they were calling you boy, and they were like you said the most racist people were in South Carolina at this point in your life. Well, I, I didn't I didn't pick South Carolina. I was in South Carolina. Fort Jackson. I, I, yeah, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. I knew what racist was mm-hmm. in New York. I mean, I knew what it is growing up. I said when I went down there and I went to Fort Jackson, South Carolina, I saw it in a whole different light. I never in New York. I never went around where a black guy couldn't go into the same bathroom. But down there, they had that. So it was really... Late 60s? When was this? In the 60s. 64, okay. I got it. Mid-60s, got it. Yeah. gotcha. So it was really heavy down there. Now, probably not legally, but the people, some of the people, and I had trouble with a couple of guys walking on the line. We were serving. He came from the Bronx, this black guy, and uh, I heard him call him boy and this and that. I knew he wouldn't like that. I looked at him but it didn't seem to bother him. Then he did that with me. And uh, <clears throat> then he, he told me, whip it on me, boy. You know, and I was putting the stuff in, the, in his tray and stuff. I had that long metal spoon. Mm-hmm. It started dripping over and I stopped. And he threw it on the table. And he says, when I tell you whip it on me, I'll tell you when to fucking stop. I was stunned. So I just whacked him right in the fucking head. <laughs> With a spoon? With the spoon. <laughs> and then the black guy jumped over the counter. Of course, the other, his friend hit me with a tray, and the black guy jumped yeah. over. And we were fighting a couple of them. And then uh, the MPs came. We were, like, arrested. And uh, the guy, the head MP, was a black guy. And he looked at me. And he says, you like helping black people? Boy, he thought I jumped in to help him. Mm. It was the other way around. Gotcha. But I wasn't going to tell him that. So I said, well, that's the way it is in New York. And he winked at me, so I knew I wasn't in trouble. And uh, But we we never were able to serve anymore. They put us in the back. We were peeling potatoes all the time. No more had, spoons yeah, for you. No more spoons. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough to hurt somebody with a potato. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, you got to yeah. throw it at them versus right. hit them with a spoon. And you're not on the line, so you're that's in the true. back with you a big drum it. and peeling potatoes all fucking day, day long. <clears throat> so I, I I never had a problem. My granddaughter is biracial, so I never had a problem. You know, I'm doing a video now. I was in prison and I was with a, a biker, this guy Mark. He had long, long hair coming down, a full beard. He looked like, just he looked like he had all hair, his whole face, everything. You could hardly see his face. Real racist guy. And uh, I'm in a cell with him. The unit manager was black, a black woman. And she says, I'm going to put you in the cell with him. He's, I'm going to move you as soon as I can, but put up with it. Mm-hmm. So she knew he was a problem. To There's be a white guy. A white guy. With yeah. a lot of hair. In not a lot of hair. Okay. Looked like a fucking uh, monkey. And uh, so we have conversations and stuff. And, you know, he sees a program with a black man and a white woman. He wants to change the channel. He wants to do this. He wants to do that. So I said, leave it alone. Then this, the thing, every time I got up, I stepped on potato chips, pretzels. He was real dirty. That was my first argument. I said, bro, we got to live in here. Clean it. I don't want this shit on the floor. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> then one day, when I wanted to watch a program, and he didn't want it, he says, I know why you will allow this. Because of your daughter. She likes black people, right? I said, shut your fucking mouth, bro. I told you to stop with the racist shit. He carried on. And then he says, yeah, he says, you got a little nigga baby. 
I hit him so fucking hard. We fought all night long because it was after we let go. And you're in the same cell as this guy. Same cell. We fucking bashed the shit out of each other. All night? All night. Holy shit. Got up the next day. There was a Spanish guy, Steve-O, in the next cell. Yeah. Sammy, what the fuck were you doing, bro? So what do you think I was doing, bro? I was fucking fighting all night. My lip is hanging. Everything is fucked. But he was all fucked up. He went to the unit manager and he told her. She called me in, and uh, she said, what happened? I said, nothing. She said, nothing. <laughs> you're, all, you're all caught up. The guy told me that you had a fight with him. So I said, listen, I had a fight. So she says, he said racial shit to you, right? Mm-hmm. It could be. Don't fight no more. You, I can't move you to a cell, but you're going to go back in there. Kick his fucking brains in, <laughs> she told me. No shit. I swear to God. She says, do it what you want, but don't finish it. Just don't destroy him. Because he wanted to, to be moved. Yeah. I went back in. As soon as I got back in, I said, listen, I apologize for last night. So he put his hand to shake, and I whacked him a fucking oh, wow. shot. <laughs> and I said, fuck <laughs> this. I beat his fucking brains in. The next day, he went to the, the warden. That's why he grabbed the warden. And he said, I want to be moved. This guy is every fucking night. The one looked at me. You fighting with him? Bro, the guy's a piece of shit. He's a liar. He's a liar. Your fucking face looks like a fuck. <laughs> 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 knuckles are bleeding. Knuckles are still <laughs> yeah, bleeding. Yeah. How'd I, you get out of this I morning? say, I do that to myself, bro. I do that because I'm stupid <laughs> and I'm in jail. I do it to myself. The, law, the warden started laughing. He says, all right. He says, Sammy, just slow it down a little bit. <laughs> so everybody hated this guy. This guy everybody w- hated him. What ended and up happening to the guy? Did he even make it? He, You know, I was friendly with AB guys, some AB guys. And uh, this guy, John, and he was in the same unit as me. We were in other units together. And he knew about the fight. So this guy, Mark, was going to leave. They called him. Marshals are here. You're going to leave. I was so happy he was leaving. So John called him. He says, hey, Mark, you're leaving? Yeah. And he put his hand out. So <laughs> Mark grabbed his hand. He grabbed his hand and hit him a fucking left. So you can't do nothing because the marshals are waiting. If you don't leave, then you're going to stay there. So he wants to get the fuck out of there anyway. So everybody hated him. This guy, Jimmy the General, was a made guy. He hit him one day with me. You know, that's a funny story because he, he was a biker and he did tattoos. So he's showing me some of the work he did because I had a ton of tattoos. And uh, he shows me and his wife has her dress up so you could see the leg and the work. But she has no panties on, right? And it's, it's up quite a bit. So I said, oh, my God. I said, this is good work, bro. I'm looking right at his wife. <laughs> so... I said, Jimmy, come here, bro. Look at this. Mark does beautiful work. Look, he's got, he's got Bikyak. Look at that. You know, Bikyak in Italian. <laughs> he says, take a peek at this. It's Bikyak over here. So <laughs> Jimmy comes over, looks at it. He's laughing. Mark says, what's Bikyak? That's beautiful work in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> said, That's what it means. Telefaccio. <laughs> <laughs> so we tortured him. But I beat him up every night. How long did that last, Sammy? It lasted about a week. And then he just I got he you. just stopped. He just stopped. He he was literally crying. Stop it, Sammy! Because as soon as the door clicked and the guard walked away, he knew it was it was like round three, round four. Let's go again. Wow. I just wanted to go. Were you guys it. ever like knocked out on the ground like after being you know hitting each other so much? Was it ever he to that point? He had the top bunk, so and I had the bottom bunk. So as soon as the guard was still there locking, he would try and jump on the chair at the desk and boom, shoot up onto the top bunk, and I couldn't get him. Mm-hmm. You know, because if I'm short, so when, as I step on the chair to try to get him, he would kick. <laughs> and uh, he tried to keep me to fuck. Wait, wait, was, he, was he an actual monkey? or? Like? He was like a monkey, but I, he would kick me to, so I couldn't get on there. But I would, I would take the kicks, back off a little bit, and then... You would try to drag him off the yeah. top? Is oh, I dragged him off the top a bunch of times. But he would hang on to the thing. But this his whole, is like, this is whole like body was in the, yeah. Like you're doing a Hell in a Cell match. Yeah. Like you're the Undertaker. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but Sammy, the bottom line is you guys shared a cell together. Like, 
How do you even sleep now at that point? Now you can't leave. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, you, you How do you know, even sleep? At the end of the night, if we fight for about an hour, we could both go to sleep, believe me. Oh, dude. <laughs> you could both go to sleep. You, you have to. I yeah. mean, you're so exhausted and so beat up. Yeah. You know, it's just the whole day. Now they locked you at night. Now you're battling for an hour, hour and a half, banging all over the fucking place. You know, you stop. It's uh, you just can't keep going. In other words, it's not. <laughs> it's not that I want to kill him. I just yeah. want to beat him up. Let me ask you. Yeah. At the end of the fight, do you say good night? And then like they no. say you. <laughs> no, no, there's no good nights. <laughs> <Toodles. laughs> Toodles. See you in the morning. See you in the morning. I mean, that's and a great he, question. I mean, like he would tell him me shit, and yeah. then I would tell him, listen, tomorrow go because I wanted him out of the cell. I don't want to yeah. fight him every night. Mm -hmm. I said, go tell the unit manager to move him. <laughs> I mean, you talk tell, about go complain. I don't give a fuck. You talk about not being able to sleep. I mean, your whole life, man, you've lived on the razor's edge for so long. Like, you do something, you do some work, and then you got to think, you know, man, this is what I just did. could be 25 years if anybody ever catches me. 25 years of my life, any minute, anybody could be a cop, anybody could be undercover, any, anything that you speak into can be wired. Like, what, you talk about not being able to go to sleep. Like, what was it like in the beginning? What was it like, you know, a, as you were moving up the ranks? Did it ever become easier? Did it ever be like, well, they haven't caught me yet. They're not going to catch me. How, how, did, how did you handle the stress of being in that life? I got caught all my life, bro. <laughs> Every fucking thing I ever did, just about. Especially as a kid. I got caught a lot of times. Look at my rap sheet. I'm arrested 20 fucking times in my life. I'm arrested one time on a double homicide that I didn't commit. I got out on bail. $100,000 bail back then. I came out, I got busted, robbing cars and robbing things to pay fucking lawyers and things, and I got busted a third time. I had three cases going at the same exact fucking time in my life when I had those cases. So I'm, I'm busted a lot of times. You know, I just, this uh, life of mine, I, don't, I seem to be involved in everything. I was chosen to go on hits that were literally impossible. The Johnny Keys hit the Castellano hit. I was in three mafia wars. My life just never stopped. I don't know what happened or why, and I just kept when going. Did you, when did you enjoy your life? Like, what, what I, was I, the happiest I, phase of your life? I always enjoyed my life. My wife, my kids. When I went away, I, had a, I bought a farm. When we would go away from the farm, I would get off the highway in Jersey. It was Cream Ridge, New Jersey. Bro, the mob, everything was out of my head. I smelled those trees, the... the I, I was in I was in a different thing. When I went home, I shut it down. Uh, it had two different lives, and I wasn't just fighting and shit all the time. It happened. I think maybe my size. It happened. Fights more, thinking they could get do something or get away with things. I fought in the ring. I don't give a fuck if I win or lose the fight. When I'm in a fight, I want to hurt you. Period. And I don't give a fuck if you win. But you're going to know that I fought. You were in a fight, yeah. You're going to say, bro, I beat him up, but I don't want to fight him again. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's all I do, you know. But uh, I don't back up from anybody in prison, but I don't bully people and I don't, I'm good with people. I'm, you know, I, I asked Patrick, I know him a long time. I never beat him up as big as he is. Hasn't happened <laughs> yet. Hasn't happened yeah. yet. <laughs> and it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Peaceful what are you dog. smiling about? It might no, no. happen to you. <laughs> First of all, off camera, Gerard was upset because Adam was acting a little too hard around Gerard. Today. Yeah, he felt safe with I Sam. Felt safe with Sam. He, he had his muscle like, here yes. with him. Yeah, but but so for the next uh, couple hours, I'm I'm looking right at you, Gerard. <laughs> By tomorrow, uh, lose my number. I'm like coming over here. But but thing. Sammy, I guess you, let's Sammy. let's restate, uh, le uh, change the word uh, uh, happy, peaceful. Like if you were to go. Think about the most peaceful phase of your life. When was it? Like, I'm talking pure peace. And I'm not talking about when I come home, smelling the trees, the kids, the family, all that stuff. I'm talking pure peaceful. What was that era? Was it when you were a kid? Was it when you were in your teen? Were you, you know, a young adult? When was that? No, of course, when I was a kid, I had a good mother, a good father, and uh, I had good friends in the neighborhood. I played ball. I, you know, I never did anything. But I was dyslexic, and I had trouble in school. So I think that was my downfall, if you want to call it that. I had trouble in school. You know, I told somebody once, you see this paper? I told mm. them, here, read this paper. I'll tell you. Read this paper. 
Then I take a blank piece of paper and I just scribble on it. And I say, read that. And you'll tell me, I can't read it, it's all scribbling. Well, that's what this looks like to me. Hmm. How old were you when you said that, when you showed that? Well, I did that a little older, but because people didn't understand it back then, but school just wasn't for me. You know, and kids are cruel in school when you, they're calling you dummy, they're yeah. laughing yeah. and this and that and everything. I had a little bit of a temper, especially I like girls that laugh and they're belittling me in front of girls. So when I have to school, I break your fucking ass, bro. Mm-hmm. So you wouldn't do it no more. And I think that's what I learned that, you know, a good swift punch stops the laughing and stops the joking and whatever. If you're joking as a friend and you're doing something, that's one thing. But if you're trying to belittle me, I don't take that lightly. And I think that's, I got left back in the fourth grade. I got left back in the seventh grade. And I was in a gang. So that was, it was over. That started my life into a way of crime. Now, we were in a gang. We were like, fuck the mafia. I'm not going to ever be in the mafia. It's us against the world. It's all awesome. Fuck this the is ma- in what, middle school type this of mentality? Was, no, this is 16, 17, okay, now you're in high 18, <laughs> 19. I got drafted into the Army during the Vietnam War. I came out when I was 21, right back into the ramp is in a gang. At 23, the neighborhood was so saturated with the mafia, you couldn't do anything. So, and the, while I was gone, most of my friends hooked up with somebody. So at 23, I hooked up with the Colombo family, and I did my first hit, and the rest was history. I have a start button. I don't have a stop button. Whether it was business, whether it was the mafia, whether, no matter what it was, and it's until today. There were some young girls who worked for me. I burnt them out. Too much work, too much drive. Um, no, 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 no other reason. But I seem to always be like that. I'm just aggressive that way. Um, I'm 76, and I'm doing 15 different projects. St- with you guys, uh, Mafia States of America, I'm working on a scripted show, on a script. I'm working on a, a possible documentary, um, DACA series. We're talking with people with. I have them on social media. I'm like a social butterfly all over the fucking place. <laughs> I don't stop. That's got to be pretty quiet. That's got to be pretty wild for you. You lived your whole life trying to keep everything under wraps, and now the entire yeah. world is is snitching on themselves on a phone. All these 16-year-olds are taking like Snapchats on themselves at a party. We used to try to sneak in at Mm -hmm. night so our parents didn't know we were partying. You lived your whole life in the shadows and now everything's on Front Street, man. You know what I say a lot of times? I say that what I'm doing, I got, you know, 400,000 now subscribers. I got 50-something million hits on my podcast and my videos. I said... If John Gotti was alive and be looking at this, he would be so sick. He would say, <laughs> that's what I wanted to be. He wanted the publicity. He oh, wow. wanted, True. he would have loved this, in my opinion. Because this is what he was about. Everything was a show, the way he dressed, acted. It wasn't goes on Austria. Me, I was on the duck. I don't want to see nothing. You know, the agents would say, what a pleasure it was to follow Sammy when he was the underboss. He'd come out of his office, T-shirt, pair of sneakers. He'd go in the schoolyard with some kids playing handball. It was so different watching him than watching some other gangsters, you know, playing that gangster role. I didn't do that. Low key was for me. Now my, the role's reversed. I, I'm, a, I'm a fucking social butterfly. YouTube. YouTube you know, is how the mob went they legit. Call, they call me podfather now. The podfather. <laughs> is that just a sign of the times that things know. have changed so significantly? What I, is guess it, I guess it did. I, it, it's a sign of the times that, I mean, I never even saw this stuff. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I went away. I was I mean, almost 18 years straight. I never even saw these phones. I still have trouble with this phone. But, uh, I mean, it's a pleasure, really. Be, you get in the car, that gives you directions. Do you think? Do you think? Uh, uh, do you think uh, technology? Uh, if technology was around when you guys were coming up, do you think many guys would have found a different way, different racket to make money and not doing illegal things? 
Do you think it would be very different or you think guys would still be doing what they're doing? Because this is helping you make money. This is helping you generate income. This is, I mean, 400,000 subs, you got there very quickly. 50 million pot, you can do sponsorships. You can do a lot of different things that's going on with you. You got people that are watching. So your mind is not consumed with, you know, hey, I need money. What do I need to do to go make money? So is this, is this almost eliminating the thought of I got to figure out a way to make money and survive? Do you think that would have prevented a lot of guys to get into the life with the technology we have today, both from the camera standpoint as well as way to make money? I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I, you know, my mindset was being a gangster and I was a gangster the whole time. I don't think I would have turned to this. Now, I might have had somebody else used other people and took a piece of some business that they were doing in this field that might interest me. Hollywood might have interest me. And in the background, I'm a camera guy. I'm in the back. I'm, I don't want to be in the front. Now it's different. Now I am, I am in the front. Everything's about my voice. I can't even duck. I can't even go away for yeah. a weekend. But I don't know. There's two sides of this sort. You can make money with it, and people should use it, and use it properly, and make money. But the other side is that I think the whole country now is in a weird place. There's people who are doing some of these platforms who are talking about being in the mafia. They're full of shit. They're not even. They weren't having nothing. And everybody seems, a lot of them seem to be lying. So you got to disciple which one is good, which one is bad, which one is... So there's a confusion about all of this. So it has two edges to this sword. I don't know. And there's a lot of things that are going on with kids today that, I, I mean, I don't understand. The whole country is just out of whack. If you would have told me about this country at this point, if four years ago, three years ago, I would tell you crazy. That would never happen in the United States. In what way? Which part? The, every part. The coronavirus, the whole thing. I mean, the masks, no masks. I don't even know what to believe anymore. It used to be, you listen to the news, it was gospel. Oh my God, this is what they're saying on the news. Cronkite. Cronkite. All the, you know, when you went back, the CNN, the guy who originally formed Ted CNN, Turner. Ted Turner, people like that. Now they disappeared. I don't know what's running it anymore. You, don't, you can't believe anything anymore because one day they're telling you one thing. Wear masks. Don't wear masks. Wear two masks. Take a shot. Take another shot. Mm -hmm. Take a booster. Take another booster. Come on, bro. What What's going on here? Two completely different realities it's depending on which channel you now, watch. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, and it's you're hearing all kinds of bullshit. You don't know what to believe. Mm. This guy Fauci. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if he needs a medal. The sexiest man alive, guys. Yeah, yeah. Sexiest man alive. Or he bullshitted the whole world. He's part of this whole virus. Like he, you don't know if he's a hero he's or a bullshit artist. He's a fucking. He's no fucking hero. This guy. He's no hero. He's paid from what I understand the highest paid guy in employee, the federal yeah. government. He's supposed to be a doctor. He's supposed to care about us. He's funding this thing in China with money. Like we're paying for that. We're paying for to get a bat who is disgusting and mm -hmm. has all kinds of viruses. And we're getting those viruses and trying to transform them into... Worst viruses. The worst virus and making it that man could catch it. For what reason are we doing that? Mm. The, the excuse is, so if man catches this, we could uh, cure it. Mm -hmm. That's bullshit because <laughs> you didn't, bullshit. It, from the bat, you can't even get it. Mm -hmm. First of all, bats don't even live near us. And you can't get it. So you're creating something to see what you can cure? Bro, millions of people have died from this. And the word hero, bro, this is the furthest thing from a hero. Well, I can't all, explain what I would like to do to him. Well, with all, all due respect, I mean, listen, you, you did your crimes and you did time, right? Mm -hmm. But how do you feel about somebody like Fauci? Or what just happened where, you know, we dropped a Predator drone and it took uh, intense 
you know, seven kids. It took intense scrutiny from Rand Paul for them to admit, yeah, actually, that wasn't a terrorist that we killed. It was ten civilians, and it was seven. It was an aid worker and seven children. This is our taxpayer dollars. We're, we're, we just committed a war crime that was financed news, by the hours of our lives. Every news station said it was ISIS-K. We took them out. Mm -hmm. Everybody was said, what a strong move. And the next thing you know, the real reports comes out, and it's what it's you're talking about. It's seven kids. Yeah. yeah, so I got to ask you, as, you know, as somebody that did time, and, and, and you did your crimes, and you did time, right? But now you look at somebody like Fauci, it, it looks like nothing's going to happen to him at all. The, these guys, nothing, there's no accountability whatsoever. Even small things. The, the mayor of, of uh, San Francisco puts the entire city on lockdown, and she puts a mask mandate out, and then she's out there dancing and drinking and partying with no mask whatsoever. I mean, how do you handle something like that where None. you were held accountable, but but these people that hold the rest of us accountable face no accountability themselves? Well, let me, let, let me answer that a little bit. I've never seen the mafia be a predator against society. We stole, we made money, we killed one another because of rules in our organization, we didn't go out killing innocent men, women, children. You there mean like people that are outside the mafia? Outside of the mafia. And we didn't do certain things. We took a piece of things that in industries, but we took a piece. These people don't give a fuck about nobody. Mm. They take the whole pie, one. Two, they don't care about men, women, or children and innocent people. There's a complete difference. They're nothing like the mafia. Talk about the government. The, the people who were, yes, the government and politicians. Mm -hmm. You think they care? I, I even don't the think media, they do, Even no. some of the media people who are out there today. Do they care? You go to college, you go to universities, you, all your life you're going to be out there, you're going to hold the powerful, hold their feet to the fire. Are they doing that? No. So what happened? What is happening? And how do you stop it? That's the whole thing. So this technology, Patrick, we went into a whole frenzy about what's going on. But this technology, I, I think it's good. And it has a bad side. I don't know if it's all that good. They're teaching race theory in prison, in schools. I mean, I don't, under, I don't get that either. Critical race theory. CRT. Which is, which yeah. is yeah. just watered down Marxism. And I mean, if that's you're, communism. Well, it's racism because if you're white and your grandfather owned something or did something, then you're no good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't get it. My, I don't even know my great-grandfather. I don't know what he did or what he didn't do. Mm -hmm. I don't give two fucks what he did. It has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. I know what my mother did. I know what my father did. They were far from being racist. Look what they did with Jews. They, they, they loved them. Or they rich. were their neighbors. Huh? Or rich. Grew up middle class Brooklyn, just like you know everybody else. You know, that's like you, you, you weren't down in the south running a plantation. You know, like you, what, no. what do you hold the held accountable for? And I don't think even those people. I don't knock those people. That was the time, and that's what they did. And racism didn't start with bringing blacks into the, white people didn't bring blacks into this country and use them as slaves. Like it's the histories. Where did they come from? It started in Africa. The strong African tribes grabbed strong men and women and sold them in Africa. Shippers who went there said, wow, this is, we can make a lot of money. Guy looks like a strong guy. We could sell him. He could be a worker somewhere. That's how it started. It started with black people doing it against black people. And then it went all around the world with shippers and whatever. Mm -hmm. This isn't a thing that some kid is born today, whether they're Latin, whether they're white, whatever they are. Mm -hmm. They're not guilty of anything. And you can still feel bad for who it happened to without saying, you know, any of, of course it's my you fault. Could. Yeah. Of course you could. And, and, and when you're wipe, wiping out history, that's why they want to wipe out history, because this is what it really was. So, of course you can feel bad. Mm -hmm. I would hate that. I would hate to see that. I have a ton of black friends. I just was on Gangster Chronicles. I was treated like a king with them. The mm -hmm. same type of environment, all black guys. Joking, laughing, we had a great time. Of course I feel bad what they did then, but that's why you want history. Mm -hmm. You want to change it. Vietnam, we went there. They were telling me when I was a kid, training, they're going to come here, they're going to rape your mom, your sisters, they're going to kill us. They're going to do this. They were saying they're that the that. Viet Cong was going to come here and do yeah. that. That was yes. the that was propaganda that you propaganda. were being served. That's what I was training on the. Oh, wow. 
But that's bullshit. I don't know a one Vietnamese guy or woman who's bad. The only Vietnamese woman I know, they do your nails, they do your toenails, your fingernails. They're polite. They're good people. When we left that country, that country never did anything. It got better. Mm -hmm. So it was all bullshit. So what we're doing now, we're, we're fucking with countries all over the place. For what? With Iran, Korea, this one, that one, uh, all Afghanistan. these countries. Serious, Afghanistan. Serious I mean, next. where the fuck are we? Where are we going with this technology and everything we're doing? This technology, we just killed innocent people. The guy was had water drums because he's a humanitarian for people who didn't have water. And seven kids, 10 people, legitimate people we killed. So now, and we'll just put that on the back burner. That don't mean nothing. How do you think those people are going to feel? Are they going to love us? They're families. They got lost families. They're going to hate us. And, and we're doing these things. Now, I go with the Me Too movement. You pat a girl on the ass, oof, you're in trouble. Me Too will go crazy on you. Where the fuck is the Me Too movement about these girls and women that are about to be slaughtered in Afghanistan. What does the Me Too movement stop at the border? What about all, all those people? What about these people in the border here? I don't know what's going on in this country, I'll tell you the truth. The, I look at this border, we opened up the border, it's a million and a half plus people got in already. I gotta wear a mask, take mm -hmm. shots, do this, do that. They don't have to wear a mask. They don't have to take shots. They don't have to be tested. They can put it on buses. They're shipped all over the country. I feel sorry for them when I see them coming through the water, old ladies or kids and this and that. But I feel kind of sorry for the whole country, for us. When do we care about us? Well, Sammy, you let's use your knowledge of history maybe to our advantage for us that weren't around when you were a kid. I'll be careful. I ain't that fucking No. <laughs> <laughs> you said you were... You said, yeah, but history, you want to have a... I'm not going to ask not, you about Julius Caesar here. <laughs> I don't want to know about Marcus Aurelius here. I want to... <laughs> All right, go ahead, go ahead. When you were a kid... Uh, in in in, this, in, in, the, in the '60s, is that yeah. fair to say? All right, all right. I mean, things couldn't have been any worse. JFK assassination, MLK assassination, Bobby Kennedy, uh, Sirhan Sirhan just got out of jail after 50 freaking years. You were a kid growing up. Race relations, you know, race si riots, yeah. race riots, uh, civil rights movement. Everything was going on. Is it fair to say that we're we're doing better now than, than then? Yeah, I mean, me as you, crazy as things are now. Let me give you a little example of that. Yes. We had a thing with the Italian people, the Italian-American Civil Rights League. We had big rallies. A hundred thousand people. Not one window was broken. Not one person in the streets was beaten up. Not one cop was assaulted. A hundred thousand there was Irish, Jewish, Italian people. There was every nationality. But, but Joe Colombo did get shot. But, but that's by a guy who, yeah, a radical nut shot him. Uh -huh. But I'm saying the people, 100,000 of them, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. So we have somebody gets shot, a black, a black guy, they put his knee on his neck, which is horrible. As soon as I saw that, I said, that's mm -hmm. a disgrace. This guy's the, the cop. His life is over for what he just did, and what I watched. Yeah. The other three cops are schmucks. Just watching them. Just watching him. You're a cop. Take out your gun to your fellow cop and tell him, get your fucking knee off his neck or I'll fucking shoot you. Get it oh. off. That's what you should have did. You didn't. So you're just as much to blame. Not as much, but you should be fired and thrown out. You're not a cop. You're not a good cop anyway. But mm. to, to Gerard's point, it seems like back then public figures were being assassinated like you said the colombo mm -hmm. jfk mlk now it's just everyday citizens getting shot and it's everyday citizens getting knee on their neck it's actually why is that so different it's like it's, you know public fears aren't getting assassinated Ger now. germany just actually it doesn't have to do with america but it's to your point germany actually just disbanded their highest level of government police what we would consider like state police because they said that they had an unfriendly opinion of the elites. 
That was the mm. actual excuse that they gave to disband it. They had an unfriendly opinion of the elites, so the <laughs> elites just got rid of them. So, yeah, it, it's upside down. It used to be the civilians holding the elites accountable. Now mm-hmm. it's the elites holding the civilians at bay. It's, wow. it's a very strange time Things to be alive. Things certainly yeah. have shifted. Yeah, yeah. it's almost right. back to yeah. being futile. Listen, all those people you said, Kennedy got shot. Yeah. I saw the whole country crying right. when he got shot. I don't see no revolution. I didn't see mm-hmm. wars. I didn't see riots. I didn't mm-hmm. see anything. I, it, it was a, Republicans it was, are crying. Democrats, the same thing everybody. with Martin Luther King. I seen people, white people, all yeah. kinds of people crying. Mm-hmm. This was a shame. He was a good man. I didn't see riots. I didn't see nothing. All of a sudden, now everything is a riot. Well, let's not forget these people are paid to riot. Yeah, well, they're paid. So then, some people who's, are, who's not paying them? How come we never figured that out? No, we know who they are. There, there's that guy from, from another country. I can't, can't George Soros? So. George Soros. We, we know who this guy is. See, that's the difference with a mafia dude. Now, if the mafia had something to do with this, that guy would be dead. Soros? Yeah, without a doubt. The mafia would whack him in fucking two seconds. You ain't doing this to us in our country. We had neighborhoods we lived in. We protected people. Those Jews living on the side of us. You couldn't fuck with them, with me sitting in the middle or, or my father or the whole neighborhood. Mm. It, didn't, it didn't happen. We had black people in, in, in living in our neighborhood, small little church, good people. You couldn't fuck with them. We wouldn't allow it. You couldn't come into a neighborhood and rape our women yeah. or, or kill a kid or be a pedophile, we would kill you. Took, you took care of your neighborhoods. We took out, uh, we, did, we did business. We took care of our neighborhood. They were our people. We loved them all. Yeah. It was the whole thing with my father. Except for Don't people shit you who eat. are rapists or child molester or something like that. We didn't love them. Yeah. And these, these things, Soros, he could, if he paid to come and create a riot in our neighborhood, bro, he better stay out of the country. Mm. So I don't even know how a guy gets away with it. Or Fauci, or these people doing these things. How are they getting away with it? You couldn't get away with it years ago or in certain mafia areas. But yet, these so-called legitimate people are, are better than the mafia. And, and this is happening. I, I, I don't get it. Did you see what happened in Ducktown, Philadelphia? It's, it's impossible to find the video, but to your point, they were rioting in, uh, in Philadelphia. And then they got down to Ducktown, and there was a whole bunch of people out there with bats, and then out there in their in their uh, in their guinea tees, their wife beaters, and it was white guys, black guys, and they were all you know going. Uh, black Lives Matter was going nuts, and they just stood there and they were like, "You guys aren't coming down this block." They were like, "What do you mean we're not coming down this block?" And they're like, "You're not coming down this block." This is not, the, the riot goes that way. It doesn't come this way. And they stopped them. And there was like three black dudes that were standing with them. And they were like, you guys are going to, uh, you know, basically, they, they would, it, it was very, very vulgar. But they were like, you guys are going to take his side? They were like, yeah, absolutely. You cross this line, you're in our territory. We're going to bust you up. And that was it. Now, that was on the news for about 30 seconds. And it was never played again because that was the blueprint for the rest of the country of how they should handle this. How they should handle this, they realized that they, they put it out there on the news because it was salacious and everybody, they were going to get a lot of views. And then they took it off the news and it's almost impossible to find online because that is the blueprint for how you do it. Just fighting back, not taking it. Hey, here's the deal. Right, exactly. Yeah. There's the line in the sand. Right. Chas Palminteri brought what, up the same what situation. What happens next yeah. is your decision. Right. Listen, I came out of prison. I went and I lived in a regular neighborhood in Arizona. They probably said, oh, shit, here goes the neighborhood. Everybody blows their horn, waves to me, sees me. Neighbor comes in. I saw you, Sammy, you won. I made stew. Would you like some? I mean, I get along with everybody. They they know that I'm, I might be dangerous. I might whatever. But, I, but I'm not now. But they all accepted me like it was perfect. Neighborly. Yeah. They knew, actually, they came to me once or twice. They rented a house. Some guys in, bought, rented the house, and they were loud with music and this and that. So I said, what do you want me to do? Well, could you talk to them? I says, I'll think about it. And I did go and talk with them. And I said, bro, the people, they, I talk with them. They're going to call the cops. So you got a choice. Calm it down. And why are you talking to me? I'm, t- I'm trying to do you a favor. Be quiet. A certain hours, these people got to sleep. They got to live. 
They got kids. Calm it down. Guys, why don't you mind your business? These, these kids are telling you this? They're one kid. College kids? What are these One guys? kid. Yeah, well, I don't know if he's college. They look like fucking idiots to me, but one kid. Why don't I mind my business? I said, listen, bro, <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm talking to you nice, telling you you could get in trouble with the cops. I'm going to tell you something else, bro. I don't even like the way you talk. Maybe fuck the cops. Maybe I'll take this as a problem, my problem and your problem. We could do that. Another guy tells him, oh, hey, bro, I think that's Sammy the Bull. He got all fuzzed up with that shit, backed up, and he stopped. They stopped. The neighbors love me. They think I'm fucking God to them. But I didn't do it in an intimidating way. I did it like to tell them, I don't know what to tell them. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to threaten them until he started giving me stupid answers. Well, how do you how do you handle the internet comments then, man? You're such a guy with respect. You're so old school with respect. I mean, the comment section must be. I don't even bother. I have, you know, I, we go off have these tech guys around us. I got a 99 point something rate of positive things. So you're gonna get these little creeps sitting in the basement and texting. You know, this guy's a creep and this guy's no good. I'm sure Patrick has some asshole. He's a good man. He probably don't have it, but. Everybody has somebody who wants to be a little creep in the basement. They get off on it. I don't even bother with them. I don't answer it. I don't bother me. I don't care. Now, if I had a million, you know, a million people, maybe that would bother me. But it doesn't bother me. Listen, I had a bad history. I accept what I did, and I accept, you know, certain comments about it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I'm not going to make father of the year. I'm not going to make. Uh, I'm not going to become the president of the United States. But I'm a human being like everybody else. I did my time. I did whatever. I stand up to what I did. Um, I did a lot of good things, bad things, and ugly things. So I, 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 I take that. I don't, I don't let it bother me. I just avoid it. Sammy, uh, let's transition into... Uh, <clears throat> uh, you were talking about a couple guys on the Internet. I asked this from Michael. I'm just curious to know what, if you can have any comments on it or not. Uh, 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 names that are coming up. Uh, recently, Jimmy Calandra's coming up. Uh, I think you and him did something together. A Light's coming up. Johnny Russo, we've had him on as well. Uh, wh who, what do you think about some of these guys and what they're doing on social? I ask Michael the same question. I did, uh, I know Jimmy Calandra. He's a friend of mine. And I did have him in my place. He came down. He was going to get a hotel room. I said, Listen, bro, I'm living alone. You want to just come and live with me? I just got my dog with me. Yeah, yeah. So we lived together for about four or five days. And uh, he came on my show, and I did a show with him. We had some laughs, like we're doing now, yeah. talking. Yeah. And then uh, one or two people, I don't want to name names, but one or two people exploded because he was arguing with one of those names or a couple of those names sure. you're talking about. And uh, they were saying that I encouraged him to do that, which I didn't. I didn't encourage him. I, I encouraged him when I talked to him. I said, there's a lot of assholes out there. Put it on the side. Don't get into it. They want to do this. They want you to, so they can get hits and they can get subscribers and they can get views. So they try to get into an argument with you. Once you're going back and forth, you're feeding right into what they want. Just to put them on the burn. But Jimmy has a little bit of a temper, and he didn't. He exchanged back and forth with them a couple of times. And... Uh, and they blame me for that, which it doesn't matter to me. I don't care. And uh, so I don't bother with some of those names you just mentioned. I don't even bother with them. I did bother with one because one of them, this a like kid. When I came home and I got out of prison, he threw me a couple of dollars right away, first guy. So I try to reciprocate by saying he's a good guy, he's a tough guy, he's this, he's that. You try to help him with a show and all that bullshit. Then he wanted me to come on and do certain things, and I didn't want to be bothered with that. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm a truthful person. If I do something, listen, I take credit for that. Or make maybe that's not the word credit, but I, I take my my responsibilities for what I did. I mean, I got people that'll call me. I got people's kids that murders I'm involved, and I spoke to them. People's families, I spoke to them. This is what happened. This is what it was. This is what the truth is. Because a lot of the stuff they hear is, is lies. In other words, I'm involved in 
three mafia wars, 19 murders. I didn't go out. And, I, don't, I never got up one morning and said, listen, I'm going to go kill somebody. I was part of the mafia. So were they. One woman at my sentence, I won't say the names, she told my d judge when I was first getting sentenced, give him life. He's a killer. He's this, he's that. He's a serial killer. He's this and that. So the judge looked at her and read her statement. And the judge says, your brother, who you're talking for, was in his crew. Did it ever bother you? He was killing people with him. It only bothered you when he got killed. It never bothered you before, killing other people. He just shut her fucking right the fuck down with that statement, really. And it was truthful. And they just disregarded what she was saying because it was all bullshit. So that's what you deal with. You deal with all this hypothetical bullshit. You know, you're protecting him. He was a saint. Anybody who died, they're a saint. Hmm. You know, after they died. But before they died, they, they were involved in five murders or whatever. How did, when did he become a saint? After he died? <laughs> so. so so in your mind is, is anybody that was in that life they were fair game it's they got what they signed up for anybody you know yeah. the real problem is if somebody had done something like DeMeo did things to people outside of the life that that's that's crossing the line two things I'll get to DeMeo in a minute but the, the thing is <laughs> this is going to sound strange but I'm a samurai warrior in Japan, they're samurais. They fight. They're very dangerous. They cut off arms, heads, legs. When they lose battles, they take a fucking thing and stab it. Mm -hmm. they, there was a culture in Japan. They're samurais. Mm -hmm. They're warriors. They're loved over there and respected. But they don't do this outside of their thing. So when I'm talking to somebody now, the guy called me a samurai, warrior. He said, you have, the mafia is a culture within this country that did a lot of good things, a lot of fucked up things. So, but we did it within our culture. So we're warriors. Maybe not, I'm not a Japanese and I'm not a samurai, but similar, mm -hmm. if you want to break it down. And every country has that culture. So we're different, uh, which will lead me right into Roy DeMeo. Roy Domato became a serial killer. I mean, I'm about to do a video about him and his crew. One time I went to him and Paul was gonna make guys. And I knew him and I said, they're gonna open the books again and they're gonna make guys. You got some good guys around you, you gonna put anybody up for it? He says, Sam, my coffee boy killed five people with me. What? Your coffee boy killed five people. Yeah. He says, I got 200 hits. 200. I said, who the fuck is giving you this kind of work? He said, nobody. I get a lot of work from the boss and this and that, from Nino. But we have the bar on the corner. He said... My uncle works there. They used to call him Dracula. He says he calls me up at 4, 30, 3, 30. We're playing cards. Tells me there's a guy left, one guy, drunk. We come in, we snatch him, we bring him in, we kill him, cut him up, get rid of him. The guy did nothing? No. I keep my crew tight, sharp. You know what I mean? I didn't want to answer that. I said... Yeah, yeah, I do the same thing, yeah. But in my head I was saying, this is a sick fucking guy. He crossed that line, he's a fucking serial killer. He's killing fucking innocent people. And this is why the mafia killed him. We are, we're not serial killers. If we become a rapist, a child molester, or a serial killer, we will kill you within our ranks. We will kill you. We're not proud of you. We don't like you. We will kill you. We kill for different reasons. You broke rules or you did certain things. But those things, you will get killed for sure. We don't give a fuck who you are. 
So it, there's, there's a difference in our life. It's hard to understand, I think, for other people, legitimate people don't understand it. And this is why I'm trying to do, in my scripted show, I, I'm doing a scene that I go after uh, another Hickey, an older, very, very experienced Hickey. I'm young. I'm a guy already, but not a pimple on his ass. They picked me to go after him because they feel that this guy, who's very, very smart, very sharp, very cunning, will underestimate me. He will underestimate my looks. I look young. I'm supposed to be, he's told, a jerk off, a guy who brings messages. And Sammy, I think, could pull this off. And uh, this is the head on Johnny Keys. And I, I did. I snatched him. When I had him in the truck in a van, he looked at me and said, a punk, a jerk off, a messenger. With five families in New York, and the Philadelphia family couldn't do. You did. You have me sitting in this van. It was the most amazing fucking thing I ever heard. Now, when we do this, I don't want to do it in my movie where I just shoot him or vice versa. The people I want to make it known what went through his head and what went through my head. They're gonna see what made both of us tick. Not just shoot them up, gang them, and doing this and doing that. It's gonna be different. He talked to me in the van. He said, you're good. You're really good. You fucked up a little bit. Okay, what I do? He said, look at the windows truckers, they have these CBs. They'll look in this window. They'll see me, tied up. They'll see you. They'll see these other guys. They'll call the cops. I was he, thinking... He, he's critiquing you I'm, on the head? Listen. I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm saying to my... I didn't say a word. But I'm saying to myself, he's telling me how to do a hit on himself. He don't want cops involved. The fuck kind of guy do I got here? <laughs> then he tells me, we're talking like we are. Sammy, go in my pocket, I got pills in there. What kind of pills? Nitroglycerin pills. I have pains in my chest, and I want to die of a heart attack. I go in his pocket. As I take them out, he says, put one under my tongue. If I don't get better, put one another one every five minutes. I put one in his mouth. Now I'm saying to myself, he don't want to die of a heart attack. He's about to die. He knows it. He don't want to die of a heart attack. We talk, I get to know him, I fall in love with him. I love him more than any fucking man on the planet. He's, he, he's what mafia is about. He's what Cosa Nostra is about. He showed me how to die like a man. Later on he says, Sammy, I want two favors more. What? The guy who pulls the trigger, if it's not you, let it be a friend of ours, meaning a main guy. You got it. And take my shoes off. Why do you want me to take your shoes off? He says, 
I told my wife she knew I was in this life. She knew there was a war that broke out in Philadelphia. I told my wife, I'll die with my shoes off. Don't worry about it. Meaning, he'll be home with his shoes off. He's not going to die in the street. I said, that's pretty heavy stuff, bro. He said, she'll know. I was thinking about her in my final minutes of life. I didn't want to kill this guy. It broke my fucking heart. What kind of guy is this? But I had a, I was under orders. I did kill him. Nikki Scarfo won the war for what I did. The next day I drove to Paul's house. It was done. It was in the papers that a heavyweight mobster by the name of Johnny Keys was found in Staten Island in the dumps dead with no shoes on. When I went to Paul's house, the maid let me in. Paul got up and came running over. Grabbed me. You did it. I didn't answer. He said, what's the matter? I said, what I did last night, I killed what mafia is about, what goes on all is about, what we're about. He should have been the boss, not Nicky. I'm not happy about it. I feel dirty. He said, Anybody else will be jumping up and down. They're going to know our family took care of it. Every boss, every underboss, and every council he has are going to know that you did it. Nikki's going to know he won the war, and you did it. And you're disturbed. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what they think. He said to me, Sammy, don't change. Stay like that. Grab me, hug me, kiss me, let me go. I don't want to talk about this no more because it fucking wrecks me thinking about him. And he taught me how to die. I always wondered if my time comes, if I'm ever in a van, my last minute, whether it's a hit guy, whether it's cancer, whatever the fuck it is, could I die like this guy? Could I be him? I hope so. He, ne he never begged you to change your mind? He never tried to talk you out of it? He tried to do one thing once. At the end, he said, Sammy, I have a lot of money. I can make you a very wealthy man. I said, please, John, don't do that. I've developed a tremendous fucking respect for you. You told me this is goes on auction. I'm telling you, it is goes on auction. There's no money in the fucking world that's going to stop me. And don't, don't do it. Don't even say it. He smiled. You are goes in Austria, true and through. Racketeers, don't do that. Thugs, mafiosos, gangsters, they do that. He was a gangster. There's a difference, going back to the original question. There's a difference in the stories about making money and about that. There's no money in the fucking world. And the respect I have then, the love, I'm not ashamed to say I love another man, I don't, not in that way, but mm -hmm. in the respect I have for him. And I, I talk about it on my podcast, and uh, it's actually, and it sounds like a commercial, so I'm not even gonna say it, what part of it, it's, it's on my podcast, and uh, it's an incredible thing. And to me, it was, a lesson in Goza Nostra that I, that I learned that is the most amazing thing in the fucking world. And I, about life. About life. Mm. How this man thought about his wife, who the fuck at 70 years old gives a fuck about their wife, how she thinks when she, he drops dead. It's, it's, it don't even exist. This guy did that. So, I don't know. What a way to answer the question, by the way. 
took you 45 minutes to answer the question, not even 45 minutes, an hour to answer the question, and you answered it that way. The difference between a racketeer and a gangster. gangster. I, I, I would have never thought the way you do, you, you know, that, that made it very clear between the two. You know, uh, uh, Sammy, uh, not to transition out, you know, on this story, uh, for me, I see you and I see you telling the stories. You're a true believer in the world you chose to live. I don't think to you was about the lifestyle. I think to you was more about the code of that life. Um, the, the one question when I, when I listen to you, you're very charming. You're very charismatic. You're extremely believable. And you're, in your own way, you're inspirational, which is very interesting. Do you ever think about that maybe uh, the, the, the other side of this question is, do you ever think about maybe you're inspiring people to want to be like you? Do you think you're inspiring younger guys to want to become gangsters? Or what part of your message is to say, do not choose to live my life? Because you don't even know it yourself. That last 20 minutes, if a 20-year-old kid listens to that, that message may be like, well, that, I want to be that guy because mm -hmm. I want to be, I want people to be proud of me to get, if a guy like that got, you know, Sammy to get emotional on a podcast where he said, I don't want to talk about it anymore, I want to get that kind of respect in my life. Can you please unpack that so a young person listening to this is not going to get stuck on the fact that I want to be that person one day? I said it a hundred times. You want to be me? Go ahead. I got 22 years in prisons. I kill people, friends. I've seen death over and over again. There's no win in being a gangster. Freedom is the most important thing you can be. Don't take me as a fucking idol, take him. Look at Patrick, when he's doing a lot of things. A lot of money, wealthy, good life. Just had a baby. I lost all that. This isn't something to recruit. This is something to understand what you'll be. You'll kill your fucking best friend on orders. And then you'll do it. Or you'll die. You may not live to fucking 40. And if you do, probably a good hunk of that will be in prisons. They'll tell you when to shit, when to eat, when to go to sleep, when to get up. If that's what you want. Mm. But there's life out here like I'm doing now. You want to be me? I'm making money doing legitimate things. And it's not just because it's my story. It's I could do it in anybody's story. Um, there's, there's a bunch of different ways in life. You don't have to go to college. There's money being a fucking carpenter, plumber, electrician in trades. You know, fuck college. They make a lot of money. Fuck up your bowl, your, tire, your, your, your sink. Call a plumber, see what happens. Mm -hmm. Guy comes in for 15, 20 minutes, a half hour, and you went for fucking 200. Trade schools. Trade schools. Become, become something else. Be, learn how to edit. How to, there's, there's an industry out here mm -hmm. doing this. There's people sitting around us all over the place. They make a living. They don't go to prison. They go home, their wife, their kids, their mothers, their fathers, do it. I, 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 this is not to be crude. This is to make you understand. Johnny Keys and that, you could have been Johnny Keys. I could have been Johnny Keys. There's no recruiting. I mean, if you want to be, if, I can't stop people from being crooks or gangsters or anything else. Mm -hmm. But my life is a perfect life. Look at it. I don't know why I'm here. I ask God sometimes. I believe in God too. I ask God. I was shot twice, stabbed once. Is there a special, is there a thing you need or want from me that you want me to do? How did I survive these fucking things? It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy on yeah. my wife, on my kids. So if you think this is a good role for you, fuck you, go do it. But I'm telling you, you're not going to wind up in a good way. So, uh, but I'm not going to, you know, I, I don't go telling kids what to do and what not to do. You do whatever you want to do. How do you Everybody. still believe in God after everything you've seen and you've been through? How do you still have that faith? You know, faith is, I always believed in God. When I went to prison, I 
joined an Indian group. Indian? Like yeah. Native American or Native Indian? Am Native oh. American. I joined the group because they shut down smoking in uh, 2004, I believe it was, and I wanted to smoke, and there was no smoking no more in the prisons, in the federal prisons. You were done. It was over. So I saw them smoking in a circle, passing the peeps pipe around. Wow. I went to them and I said, listen, I'd like to join. Because oh. they had probably religious exclusions or something? Yes, wow. yeah. So they said, you got to go to the chaplain. In feds, they could change your religion. So I said, okay. I went to the chaplain. I said, I want to become a Native American Indian. <laughs> they did it. Wow. They changed my religion. And I went and I, in that circle, they accepted me, and I smoked. And I stole some of that tobacco to bring it back into my cell. So when I, at night, I put on the TV, nice cup of coffee, I light up a cigarette after the God makes his rounds, and I smoke my fucking brains out. But I got to respect their religion. What is their religion? Their religion is they believe in grandfather. Grandfather is a road to God. They believe in God like anybody else. Mm -hmm. Higher power. Yeah, everybody believes in God. The Muslims believe in God. Allah, they go mm -hmm. to God. The Christians believe in it. Jews believe in it. Everybody believes in it. Everybody has a separate road to God. I'm no different. I'm just not on some of your roads. You tell me, well, if you didn't find Jesus, you, you ain't going to heaven. Yeah. Well, maybe I won't. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But I believe in God just like everybody else. So this grandfather, they talk about this religion. Yes. Yeah. Tell oh, us grandfather, more about that. you know, yeah. that's, that's their religion. So I did it for five years with that. I even went into Wicca. Some guys, friends of mine, said, Sammy, you're not an Indian. No. That's the, Joy, witch, that's the witches? Well, it's witches. It's not witches like you see on television. A witch is, is, is in their religion, a witch is nothing more than a term like a priest, mm. a rabbi. Or whatever. He's a witch. He can't perform anything as a witch. He can't do anything. There's, you know, about black magic, it's all that. That's television shit. Mm -hmm. But the wicked... They do have some weird, but they but they're still a religion that wants to go wherever. All religions got some weird shit, <laughs> you know. But that's that's an organization, and their road, mm -hmm. and their money. But God is God. Everybody believes in God. Some to different degrees and weird degrees and whatever, but of course I believe in God. You know, I do. I learned how to do artwork in prison. Sometimes in Arizona where I'm By living. The way, pretty legit work though. Like this is not like artwork, like artwork, like real work. Mm. No, yeah, I've seen some of the work yeah. he's done. It's it's very impressive. Yeah. Well, like yeah. painting, like Thank sculpting? You. Oh, no, no, seriously. Like, I, no, mean, I do charcoal. You can, do you have any, afterwards, can you show him some of the pics? Cause these yeah, guys I get, could, yeah, I yeah. got them on my yeah. phone. Well, my girl can show it to you. Yeah. But in Arizona, I get up and I look at the sunset or the sunrise or something and I look at it and I, it's it's so fucking beautiful and I say who could do that God who could do that beauty who could do the beauty around you who could have babies coming out of a woman's body God, God has got to be in there somewhere in everybody's mind the worst of the worst I think unless he's completely insane I'm not insane. So I believe in God. And I believe that whatever I did, when it comes time, and I talk to him, if I could get up there somewhere, and we're going to have an argument about everything I did. That's what people will tell me. And I'm going to talk to him about everything he did. There's so many kids that die in so many ugly fucking ways, bro. You could have stopped me anytime you wanted. You could stop that anytime you wanted. There's got to be a purpose. There's got to be reasons why things happen. Mm. I don't, uh, one thing I'm not is a fake or a phony or a liar. I did a lot of horrible things, but I'm none of those things. And I think that God will look at me and say, you were none of those. I make lambs and I make lions. You were a fucking lion. Maybe that's the answer. I don't know. I really don't know. 
It's not to really discuss now or tell other people that their religion is wrong or my religion is right or yours is wrong or you, you, you this, you Muslim. These are all right. God will determine it uh, sometime or we'll go back to Wicca where all energy, our body is energy. When we die, our body energy goes and floats all over to animals, to trees, to bushes, to have some another human to other things so that's an interesting thought too so I don't knock anybody's religion or anybody's anything they have their own opinions their own choice that's what we need and we need to respect everybody else's choices I think that's the next sit so, down I tell you I'd watch that the sit down the, the Sammy and God across the table at the <laughs> sit down that's the that's we the got 26 minutes left and I got a couple things I do want to get into one <coughs> of the things I want to get into is if you can pull up Rudy's clip when Rudy talks about Michael uh, uh, Gotti and Sammy when I asked a question about uh, are some people uh, uh, is this the one Kai and are some people inherently bad and what he says about that. So if you can play this. Do you think if a Sammy, if a Michael, if a Frank, if a Leonetti had your parenting and your upbringing, meaning your parents, your mom and dad, do you think they would have gone straight? Or do you think it's in them to mm-hmm. say, no, I'm still yeah, going to yeah, go yeah. do the shortcut? What do you it's think? It's a little hard to say about the people you don't know. So let me tell you about Michael because I know Michael the mm-hmm. best. There's no doubt that if Michael had the right direction and the right parenting, he'd have been a very successful, legitimate, something important. Uh, Decent guy, respected his father, which is a good thing, except it was the wrong father to respect, right? And and I'm gonna guess on the others, just what I know of, I think there are a few people that are genetically, inherently bad, evil, even. But most people are shaped that way by circumstances. I, I think I could have gone the other way if my parents kept me in Brooklyn. And I mean, I hope I wouldn't have. I hope something else would have stopped me. But there's a chance I could have gone in the other direction. So when I prosecuted people, it was always a, a sense of empathy for them. So they were quite human. I mean, they were human people. Some of them were... Gotti was a guy who liked killing. There's something sinister and sadistic about John Gotti. You you believe that? Mm -hmm. I know that. How about Sammy? Don't know. Okay. Don't know. Don't know. What do you think about what he had to say? I I don't know. I think he looked gay when he was... I don't know what he was fucking mouth up in the air. I don't know what the fuck. You're not a fan of Rudy? I'm not a fan of Rudy. No. Okay. I'm not a fan of Rudy. Listen, I'm not, I, I'm not against cops and prosecutors. I, I'm against when you think what you did is harmless. You're an Italian. He's an Italian, I would assume, right? What you did to your own kind on many occasions, you have no flaws. Your mom and dad was perfect. Depending on their upbringing, that's an insult to me. My, my, my upbringing was impeccable from my family. I'm the total opposite of what they were. And I don't think so. I think I got a good side. And I think I got the good side from them. But when you sit down and you make judgments like that, I don't know. Of course he don't know me from a fucking hole in the wall. So he can't really make a proper decision. He actually says nice things about Michael. Michael must have paid him off to say these fucking things. But he said <laughs> some nice things about Michael. <laughs> but I don't like... Racketeers have money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Racketeers have money. <laughs> so he's looking at a racketeer. So wow. anyway, what I was, what I was going to say is that the, the part of saying he looked up to his father, that's a good thing but not that father, so he's knocking his father. So I don't think that's a good thing to even say. If you like him and he did a good thing and he said a good thing, I think Sonny was a good thing, a good father. 
a, in a good way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In a different way, he was a gangster. He was the ultimate type of gangster. He didn't instill anything negative in a way. I think he instilled that he loved them in his way. I don't think I instilled anything negative to my son and my daughter. I probably did in our way. Maybe your mother and father, maybe your mother and father or your mother and father had, and, and put something in your mind in a way and we're going to blame them because you're not 100% like he wants you to be. I don't, I don't buy that. Now, there's a lot of things your mother and father teach you that are wrong, but they mean well. There's a difference. He don't understand that. There's a, they'll tell a girl what to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're wrong. Maybe it won't work for them. But they meant well. Now, the times change. So it may not work out well for the girl or the guy or whatever. But when you get into families and you talk about families and things like that, each person is an individual. Nobody does exactly like their mother and father teaches them. Nobody does. There's your environment, the neighborhood, your friends, your relatives, other people, your marriage. There's so many fucking things that form your life and how you think. Things you see. I saw the movie Jaws. I saw that fucking shark eating people, bro. I, I, I'm like a little dick. I don't, I don't go past my knees in the fucking water, bro. Neither does Gerard, by the way. <laughs> this guy must have your genes. We go out swimming in the ocean. We saw the I go out same sick. movie. <laughs> saw the same movie. Shark can't get me on land, bro. <laughs> Taking you out of the ocean. Bro. I don't want to be an ugly bastard for some fucking shark. <laughs> I'm the whole buffet, bro. You yeah. won't go in. You won't. God, they, they make fun of me, man. They make I'll, I'll go me. swim out there. I'm swimming laps. He's like up to his ankles. I'm not going any further. That's all good, bro. Put me on land with a gorilla. I'll take my chances. Yeah, out there, I'm on the plate, man. Me too. What do, you think, what do you think about what he said about Gotti? Like he said, Gotti, I know. He didn't say like, I. he said, I know Gotti's a killer. I think Gotti had a temper. I, um, um, I think... John was more of a narcissist. I think a lot of people say, well, I don't think he ever shot. No, well, I, I put your head in front of him when he's holding the gun. See what he'll do. I think he'll blow your fucking head off in two seconds flat if he wanted to. So to say he didn't pull the trigger, he gave an order, he can kill him for sure. I think he got, he had a temper and a half. Um... I think there was a couple of situations where his neighbor, there was an accident and they killed the neighbor and the neighbor disappeared and all that bullshit. But I think he was goaded into that by his wife, drove him fucking nuts. Plus he was sick about losing his child. He made a mistake, in my opinion. So when you do those kinds of things, when you kill outside the life for reasons like that, you're gonna be looked at in a whole different light like we were talked about before. Mm -hmm. You're killing somebody, an innocent person. My son was hit by a car, my neighbor. He's still, I think he's still alive, but if he's dead, he's 100 years old. So that's the only reason he's dead. In other words, I didn't kill him. I wouldn't do that, but uh, it's an accident. So I don't know, I don't want to label John as he loved to kill. I don't think he loved to kill any more than I didn't love to kill. He did what he had to do for the life. I loved him. I was attached at the hip with him. He turned on me, backstabbed. I turned on him. We played chess. I checkmated him. Simple as that. I have no hard feelings towards him. If we were alive together now and I know what I know now, I would shoot him in the fucking head in two seconds flat. Boom. Right now. Right here, from the whole up. fucking world, straight up. You betrayed me. I did everything for you. I got you out of every case. I'm behind, and the government knows it. Every case he beat, I'm fucking behind it. Bribing people, threatening people, doing all kinds of shit. Making things disappear. Killing people for you. We're in Gozenosha together, we're brothers. It's your tape. It's you on tape. Not me. 
and you want to sacrifice me. You want to help the government put me away. So I, I turned on him. If you turn on me, I will turn on you. I don't turn on people. I don't backstab. I don't fuck people. But if you turn on me, or you fuck with me, I'm going to fuck with you, or I'm going to turn on you. I don't take it lightly, and I'm, I'm aggressive in that fashion right away. And that's what happened. But I do love him. I feel bad how he died. He died like a fucking animal in prison. And this guy talking about, he loved to kill. Fuck you, no. Fuck you, you no, know, you fucking asshole. What do you know? What do you know? How many people did you fucking put away? Did you bury? Did you, do you have any fucking shame or any fucking grief? Sometimes I felt bad. They're humans. No, you didn't feel fucking bad, you fucking dick. You didn't feel bad. Sammy, some people may some people may say, you know, they call him the American mayor, okay? And the streets of New York, if you, you know, ask regular guys that are not in the life and you ask about Rudy, they'll say he cleaned the streets of New York. I felt safer because of Giuliani. Mm -hmm. I felt safer because of what Rudy did. Yeah. Law and order gave me a certain level of peace. I was living in that community. I was scared for my life. I was scared of what was going to happen. And you hear these stories. You hear these stories being told. I felt that way. Okay. I liked what he did. Okay. As a mayor. Got it. So him cleaning the streets on what he did. Yeah. You can boast about that all the fuck you want. You can even boast about being a cop. I know plenty of cops and agents. They have a job to yeah. look for me, a bad guy, and put me the fuck away. Sure. I'm not mad at them. Don't do that. Don't say that. What the fuck do you know about John Gotti? Oh. Is my opinion. Shut your fucking mouth in that area. Boast about what you did. Boast about what you did on 9-11. Boast about cleaning up the city. I'm with you. You did that. I agree. You were great. You were one of the better mayors. I'll have a whole conversation about him. He was a great mayor. I don't like his statements. I don't like his statements about parents, our parents. I'm not talking about your parents. I don't like you. Mm. I'm not talking about what your parents taught you. I don't give a fuck about your parents. But, and I understand how people feel about them. Now, they can, those same people could understand how I feel about it. And if they don't, then fucking dislike me or do what you want. There's a two-way street with everything and everybody. I talked to you the other night. You're a classy fucking guy. What you do is in your life, the people you have around you, it's a class fucking act. Now, I gotta try to think of something I don't like about you so <laughs> I can say something, but I'll find something sooner or later. But You'll I, find it. Right now, I don't have it. <laughs> We're all looking, Sammy, all of us. <laughs> Sammy, Sammy, when we talked, when we sat down, we also talked about the chin. We talked about the chin multiple times. Yeah. And, you know, uh, did you see the, did you see when Michael was here on the podcast or um, no? You didn't see? You didn't, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Would you, so you saw when the video about Chin or no? Did you yeah, see? Yeah, I think I did. Okay. So you heard what Rudy said about Chin, that he was never a number, he thought he was number two, but he was really number six. How long is that clip, by the way? Is it a shorter clip? Is this a the minute? one where a Michael minute? took a walk with, uh, yeah, a with, uh, no, no, this is, uh, no, not this one. I want you to, yeah, oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so go from the part what he says. About, do you have the beginning part, what they say about the chin? Yeah. Did yeah. we play that last time or no? Uh, no, we started from Okay, here. so why don't you go and play what Michael and Sammy said about the chin and then go to what Rudy says about the chin. Said what he wanted to say. He had the balls. Mm -hmm. He was goes in Russia. He had the brains to say it. This is people in goes in Russia. He told another boss. John was the boss. Told another boss that we were going to do a big raid and we were going to arrest the number one or number two people in each family. They did that about two weeks before. Well, Chin Giganti, who thought he was number two in the Japanese family, but he wasn't, because everybody hated him. They told him he was number two. He was like number eight. <laughs> Chin is the guy who walked around in the robes and acted like he was crazy. Well, he was crazy. He was a uh, borderline personality disorder in the military. He was actually, I think, officially, officially uh, diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic. He was. Yeah. So, but he, but he played it. He played it up. So, this information comes out. 
And one of the Asians comes in and tells you, you know, I can't believe this. Shin checked himself in a hospital. He thinks we're going to arrest him. He can be very disappointed when we don't arrest him. Did you end up with yeah. more? Eventually, but not for okay, that. Got it. We're not for that. So it, 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 it displayed to the whole world. They've been, they've been lying to him for several years. Tell you, Shin, you're number two. You're number two. Number yeah, I wanted to. Yeah, forget Shin's crazy. Don't listen to Shin. <laughs> wow. Fat Tony knew he was nuts, so he made him think he was number two. But he never. He said, "How come I don't go to the? How come I? How come I don't go to the? To the to, to, to the commission meetings? I'm number two. They say, you, you know, Shin, you're too high profile." with that bathrobe and all that stuff. If they see you walking in, they'll know where we're having the meetings. He is so fucking off base with that whole conversation. It's incredible. First of all, I knew, and I had a dozen serious meetings with Chin. He was extremely smart. Extremely smart. He was number two under Fat Tony for one reason. The boss before... Fat Tony, who died. I can't think of his fucking name, but it doesn't matter. He he brought in Chen. Chen was the, the gangster part of that. He brought in Chen, and he says, I'm going to make Fat Tony the boss. It's my decision. I want you to promise me you don't kill him. Be his number two. In time, you'll become number one. Promise me. Chen promised him. He allowed that to happen. Jim was five times more vicious, smarter, in every way had a bigger following than Fat Tony. Tony Fat Tony, I loved him. He was a great guy. Um, so that's the way it felt. So he's wrong. And then at, I went to commission meetings. I was there just for security when Chin and Fat Tony came. And... Uh, Paul was there. There's even a tape of that meeting when guys are coming out of the house, not inside or anything like that. But anyway, then he told Fat Tony, it's time for you to step down. And he stepped down. And Chin was number one. And I was at those commission meetings with John, even after Paul, with Chin. And Benny Eggs was his underboss. So he don't know what the fuck he's talking about at all. And he wasn't stupid. He did this little scam. And he put himself in and out of hospitals so that when they call, when, he, when he's indicted, and they call doctors and things and that, he, he's beat it for years. He doesn't understand. So you can't charge a man who doesn't understand what the charges are, what it is. He's mentally insane. He played that. In my opinion, mm. that's the only thing I didn't like about Chin. He played that too much. One time, agents came to his house. He ran upstairs. He got him naked under the shower with an umbrella with his mother. You do that in front of your mother, it's a little excessive for me. And if you're that bothered by going to prison, then take your billions or millions, whatever he had, and leave the mafia. Fuck the mafia. Walk away. What's your mind? Somewhere along the line, you have to have a little bit more integrity. When my lawyer went on a visit where he was in Texas after he was convicted, my lawyer was representing somebody and in the room, and Chin had already been convicted. He came out. He was talking perfect on his visits and everything else. Of course, they found him guilty. It didn't matter no more. He was talking perfect. So my lawyer says, Sammy, he's not crazy at all. He was talking perfect. I heard him the whole time. I said, I know, it was an act. So I don't even know what he's mm. saying. So he's absolutely wrong. And I, and I can give you story after story, which I'm not going to give you right now, of meetings I have with him that are important. There were, some of them are on my podcast. Um... He was a sharp as a tack. And I don't know of anybody, anybody in the mafia who would have said, fuck him, he's, fuck him. He will kill you in a second flat. No hesitation with him. None. Everybody under him loved him. Chin. Chin, yes. Bobby Manor, 
Benny Eggs, all of them loved him. And he had a, ran a tight ship and a tight family. So and he's totally wrong. And so all of you people who love him, when he talks like that, don't know what he's talking about. I would like for me and him to go to a doctor together so I can get my foot out of his ass. Because it would take a few doctors. Rudy's. Rudy, my foot would fit perfect in his ass. It's can, only an eight and a half. Can you show us what that would look like with Gerard right now, <laughs> no, just so no. we get a, no. a, a, an actual glimpse <laughs> no, no, of what worry. something like that would actually go down? Well, it's for the show. <laughs> Wow. So, I got to take a... Uh, yeah, we got two minutes left to wrap yeah. up. Good, because we got to yeah. take yeah, a We're going to take a break to wrap up here. Uh, uh, four minutes left. So one question. I asked, uh, I don't know who this conversation came up. It may have been with Chaz Palminteri that we talked about. We've done a lot of different things that... Uh, have, you, have you had any conversations or talks with Junior at all? Who's Junior? Gotti Junior. No. No, no talks? No. You know what the world would be curious to see? It'd be very interesting if the two of you guys had to sit down. And I know you would never do it. I, I know you would. No, no, I know you I, would I, I'm not it. interested in yeah. sitting down with him. See, Michael was a different story. I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't hate, yeah. I didn't, even when I didn't get along with Michael, I didn't hate him. I think that he said certain things that were not true about me, about John, about a few things that he said. I saw him now in a new one where he was walking up and down with Chin the bathrobe, you saw that? Mm -hmm. And Chin told him, if Junior knows to make you a captain, I'll make you one of mine, family. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, we don't even want to talk about that. Chin didn't have nobody come near him. There was a main guy in the Colombo family who used his name, Gigante. He had him called then. He was this close, this guy, to get killed because he used his name. So he wasn't the boss. <laughs> he was a powerhouse. I mean, and he was tough. But he was pretty fair in different ways. I mean, I had a couple of good decisions, and one of the decisions is he. there was a whole hit. It's a long story. I'm not going to get into it. But when at the end, he called me down again for a final meeting, and I had permission to whack a few people, and he said, I want you to do me a favor. Two of these kids that you could hurt belong to a friend of ours. We took him out. We take care of his wife and those kids. I want to ask you for a favor. Give them a pass. They were that wrong that he had to ask. And I said, okay. I will do that, but I want to ask you for a favor. He was a boss. Mm -hmm. I was just a pup, mm -hmm. acting captain. He said, what? I said, this kid's Capacci, who gave me all this information and caused this whole thing. He's with you people. I know now that you know this whole thing. You're going to wind up killing him because he came to us and not you created this what do you want I want you to give him a pass he saved my life this kid I'll give him a give him a pass and I'll give those two kids you want a pass so that's pretty smart Sammy he put his hand out we shook hands and nobody got killed and after that so and it's a whole long story and uh, you can't see that on Patrick's interview. You're going to see it on my podcast. podcast. <laughs> and we're going to put, hey, why don't you put his link below yeah. for his podcast so people can go subscribe. Gang, if you yeah. enjoyed today's podcast, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Mafia States of America. What's that? You have something for Sammy. What's the? On, on the oh, the what? Oh, we got Sammy's. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Sam, we got a merch. If your team Sammy, we have Sammy's shirts up here now. Can you put up the link, Kai? Sammy, this is for you, Team Gravano. Right now, we have a Team Gravano going on. We have a Team Francis going on. If you're Team Gravano, go order Team Gravano's shirt. Kai, put the link below so people can go order Team Gravano. People are asking, when is Mafia States of America going to come up? Come out. Here, here's how it's going to work out. It's either going to come out 
in Q4 of 2021 or it's going to come out in 2022. But it's eventually going to come out. Okay, And when we make that announcement, I'm sure the world's going to go crazy. Lots of people are upset when I say 2022, but we're working on it. We're finalizing it. Today you're going to get a sneak peek of some of the stuff that we're doing, which is going to be exciting. But we're looking forward to launching that to the world, Sammy. Great. Yeah. And I want to tell the people who are watching over here, Listen, it's going to come out in 2021. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming here with a gun. <laughs> do you want to? Do you want to amend your statement at all? That, that could be. To, by the way, <laughs> I think it's safe that, to say it's coming that, out in 2021. That, that could be yeah. October 1st, but that could also be December 31st. Yes. Is what right, it, yeah. But it's happening in Q4 2021. <laughs> And FBI, if you're listening to this, <laughs> that was a threat. <laughs> All right, take care, everybody. Wow. We'll see you on Thursday. Take care, Sammy. All right. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. This All was great. This no was wonderful. Sir.